any great individual has got good people around him and that that's why the concept of team is so important I was 10 years old, I remember it like yesterday, and my dad took me to my first rugby match or, or test match, and that was the Springboks played All Blacks in 1970 at Loftus Fairfield, and I saw two teams operating, and that was special for me, and I always wanted to write a book about teams, you know, I wrote a few other books, but this specific book, how can teams work together, how can you create that chemistry between people, how can you get people focused, how can you get people aligned. And all of us are somewhere, what you're going to do, you're going to be in front of a team and you need to get that team going. You can be a teacher, you can be a coach, you can be a sales manager, but you're going to have your team and you need to get them to the next level. And that's what this book is all about. How you take a team from nowhere and make them a champion team. And this book is all about creating your champion team. Yeah, I think the world's about being individual, but if you think about important things that happened in the world if you think about they said it's impossible to run the mile under four minutes and roger bannister did it in 1954 but he needed pacemakers he needed people around him to push him to the next level if you think about mount everest climbing everest edmund hillary he couldn't do it on his own so you can take every special achievement in life you need a great team around you you need good people around you so i've got no doubt about it you know there's not such a thing as one great individual any great individual has got good people around him and that that's why the concept of team is so important yeah that's actually at this i think it's a great book to read actually because it's a very practical book uh, it's divided into 40 chapters and each chapter has got some inspiring insights that i share something with you and then i've got an inspirational story as well and i've got great stories about one of the stories wade van die kerk a famous 400 world record holder you know his coach Hans Boeta she shared a story about discovering your why and why she's coaching and after each chapter after each section I'm giving you five tips as well so it's an easy read you can start anywhere in the book it's not you need to start there and finish it off so whatever is in your heart whatever you feel like reading it will come to you and you'll get something out of that book Yeah, that, that's a very good question actually winning life is about winning we can't get away from that wherever you are you want to be a winner and my books is about creating champions winners but I've got a different definition of champions and it's one of the key themes in the book you need to drive the process because if you drive the process the score will take care of itself so if you've got a team and you want your team to do well and if you're just going to push results and you're going to be over obsessed with winning and numbers you're not going to get the best out of your people. That's one of the things I learned. You need to take care of your people. You first need to win in the locker room before you can go and win on the field. There's no doubt about it. And that's all about culture. And this book is a lot about culture. How do you create a championship culture? Because if you've got that championship culture going, the winning will take care of itself. Business people can learn from sport and sport can learn from business. But because sport are so competitive and that's why business people like to use the analogies in the sport world of winning and being the best. And it's the same principles. You work with human beings, you work with people that's got desires, you work with people that want to go to the next level, you work with people that experience failure in the business world, the guy that's sitting in front of a client that doesn't make a sale, exactly the same in the sport team. You go out, play a game, things don't go well. And how you get together, how you reflect, how you change your game plan, how you go to the next level. So all the stuff in the book is what you're going to experience in the corporate world, in on the sport field. Those are the key principles that's going to make you a champion. There's a lot, we spoke about being under pressure, you know, pressure is a, is a key theme in that book. And I mentioned actually practical advice for you to get into a blue edge space because if you're in a red edge space, you're worried, you're overstressed. A blue edge uh, space is all about clear, calm thinking. That's one of the principles. I'm giving you practical examples how to be the best you can be. Something like deep breathing. I don't, we, I don't think we deep breathe enough. Beginning of the day, set your goals. Goal setting is so important in the business world, creating your champion team. 
and then at the end of the day reflect a little bit what went well what didn't go well those five minutes a day extra will make a massive difference then a principle like the power of simplicity to be really creative you need to do well in the simple things in life so it's concepts that will help you to think again a concept like like move from success to significance success is about yourself so if you've got team players that just about themselves, they do well. But if you can motivate, or rather want to use the word inspire, inspire your team to strive for significance is, how can I give more? How can I change somebody else's life? And if you've got that attitude, it will take your game to the next level. Just, just a few principles, right? but there's a lot, there's 40 chapters like I mentioned, and each chapter has got new principles I'm giving you. One of the principles I believe is as well, that's for me on a personal level that I learned a lot, is about little is large, less is more. Our Western cultures always want to push hard, go for it, determination, attitude is everything. Of course it's important. But if you haven't got those, stand back a little bit, relax, be calmer. And I learned that in the Eastern philosophies, Tao and Zen, those things, there's a lot of those things in the book as well It's gonna help you to get to a peak performance. You can't just push forward. Sometimes just stand back and things will come to you. Yeah, there's a nice sequence in the book. I believe everything starts with a dream. So if you're a business guy and you pick up that book and you go to the first page, that's all about dare to dream. I want to challenge you to take your dream to the next level. So you need to identify your dream, own your dream. What the sacrifices you're going to do to get that dream going as well. So all those things I'm covering. And of course, you can't just have a dream. So if you're starting as a new business person or whatever, you need to have a plan as well. I'm giving you good tips how to follow a plan as well. And out of that plan, get good people together. We spoke about having a team around you. So you've got a dream, you've got a plan, you've got good people around you. And then the last thing you need, winning habits. And winning habits is all about having confidence. Go out as a business person, have confidence. Go out, have courage, because you will have fears. You will have fears It's not gonna maybe work. But if you fill yourself with courage, you'll take yourself to the next level. Those are the key things that will help you to start your business, but take it to the next level. It's all about mindset. So you need to have the champion mindset to take your game to the next level. In the business world, in life, in the sport world, champion mindset, that's what it's about. Yeah, the first thing that comes to my mind, unfortunately, actually, because I'm a Springbok supporter, will be the All Black Rugby team. You know, for years they've been champions. They didn't win the World Cup this year. Of course, South Africa won it in, in 2019, but they've got the ability to keep their game going. It's all right, or it's good to have to be a champion, but to keep being a champion. And one of the things that stand out is their culture. And it wasn't always that way, you know, it was years back they had actually a really bad culture and they would start working on their culture to be better people because better people will make better All Blacks and they invest in their people, they invest in leadership. They got a lot of things right that people want to play for the All Blacks and there's no egos, that's what it's all about. So if you've got a team willing to share with one another, willing to go the extra mile, willing to sacrifice, all those concepts, but it just doesn't just happen. You need good leadership to happen. You need to get people to buy into the vision and the All Blacks got that right. And because of that, they won two World Championships. And before that, or World Cups, before that, they were choking. They were actually the laughing stock of the world in terms of the biggest chokers and they turned that around. So they definitely a team to look up and to see that's the way to do things, the All Black Rugby team. Yeah, Vince Lombardi was a famous coach. He said winning is not everything, it's the only thing. And what he meant actually by that afterwards, he said actually your preparation, your attitude, and those key things, if you prepare well and you work hard, that's the things you can control. There's a lot of things you can't control, but if you can control those things, that's for me a winning attitude and a winning attitude. If you got that going, you, you actually are a winner. So our definition of winning means if you've got those things, if you've got preparation, if you've got attitude, if you've got work ethics, and then that the winning will come, I've got no doubt about it. But to answer you, and the book answered that actually very well, is winning is important, but you need to be smart, keep on winning and driving those processes.
Yeah, I believe South Africans, uh, we all need dreams, you know, like every other nation, but specifically a South African, we're a wonderful nation. And I wanted to write something specifically for South Africans that we can identify. We know the people, we look out to them, and we need heroes as well. And in those books, I've, I've wrote a few books, all of them are, are bringing those heroes to your actually to your world and you can identify with them and you can be a hero in your own life i really believe that and you can go out in the business world and take some tips from from those heroes and make it work in your own personal life and that's why i i believe to to create this for the south african context and it works well for me because it's people that i worked with so it's not just somebody i took out of somewhere it's people i spent time with and i know they actually are the best examples for us to take your dream and to take everything to the next level. I, I believe we live in a, in a time that there's a lot of negativity. People are negative, people are worried, people are overstressed. And my books has got a very positive tone and it's not over being over positive, but I believe you need to program yourself for success. You need to feed the subconscious mind. And part of feeding the subconscious mind is using powerful words because your words becomes your action and it becomes your habits and becomes your destiny. So it starts with your words. And I had a coach, John Short, he was a great coach. And before every training session, he had a quote written at the track. And before, before I warmed up, actually, I always looked at that and it played a massive influence in my life to program myself for success. I was maybe tired that day, I didn't want to train. And I knew how important my mindset is going to be. So I learned from people in my life that powerful words create powerful experiences. And that's why the power of quotes in my books are very important. There's a, they are there for a reason, to motivate you, to inspire you, to fill yourself with the warrior spirit and go out and make a difference. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've, I'm just somebody that can't sit still. I've got always new ideas and I'm excited what I'm doing and I believe in passion in my life. I'm not passionate about doing something, I, I, I don't know, I need to. And I've got at the moment, I've, I've wrote the individual book, Inspiring Champions. I've wrote the book, The Stone Cutter is more a leadership book. I've wrote the book about what you just spoke about, creating your champion team I invented or I wrote the diary that I'm very passionate about it, goal setting. I wrote a small little pocketbook, but the next one need to be for parents and I'm actually halfway there so in the next few months I'll, I'll have a book that's called Inspiring Parents, The Making of Champions in Sport and Life and I really believe that's where the champions at Africa, we need to invest in our parents because they spend time with their kids and they, the influences of parents in your life is so massive. And that's why I, I was privileged in my life as well that I had parents in my life that supported me. And I want to give back a little bit for parents and I want them to, to learn and to even be better going forward. <laughs>